I went through her program called Transcendence, and that's really completely changed my thought process on how to look for things and not having that money shame. Because if I'm providing a service, then it's fine for me to ask for the amount of income or the amount of price that I want to be paid for that. Welcome back to another episode of The Sharice Williams Show, the only podcast created for the highly conscious, high impact, nurse turned entrepreneur looking to create, launch, and scale a wildly profitable holistic coaching and consulting business from a place of ease and flow while also optimizing your wellness and vitality naturally. I'm so excited, you guys. So welcome to the podcast, and more specifically, welcome to this podcast series, which is A Nurse's Guide to Creating a Massively Fulfilling and Profitable Holistic Health Coaching Business. Today, I have the pleasure of sharing space with one of my clients, Glennis Thatch. Hey there, Glennis. Hey. Hey. And so today, we're going to just have a very authentic conversation with Glennis, um, just learning more about her, uh, kind of where she was in terms of uh, traditional uh, healthcare, and then where she is with now with her holistic health coaching business. So super excited, super excited to uh, welcome you to the show. So again, welcome, Glennis. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Cherise. That's oh my exciting. God. I'll- Always such a pleasure, such a pleasure. So why don't you share with them how long you've been a nurse, how long you've been a a nurse practitioner? Um, Yeah, we'll start there. Okay, so I've been a registered nurse for 30, wow, I'm going to say probably like 35 years. It's been a long time. That is so incredible because you look so, so, so young. So when I hear you (laughs) say that, I'm like, how is that even possible? How is that even possible? I'm serious. (laughs) It started when I was five. No, just kidding. (laughs) And then um, I've been a nurse practitioner and I'm family nurse practitioner with primary care for now 17 years. Wow. So 35 years as RN, 17 years as an NP. Yeah. Yeah. And so share with us a little bit about, uh, because you could, you could continue forever in a day being a primary care nurse practitioner. Well, actually, I'm sure the listeners will want to know what type of nurse were you for 35 years? Everyone always likes to know that. Oh, so registered nurse. So as a registered nurse, oh my gosh, I did it all. Okay. <laughs> I was med surge. I did some insurance type of thing where I did pre-certifications. I did um, some just where you just kind of are making sure people when they're in the hospital, you're like case management. I did that. Oh. I did. It's so funny. I did so many things. I did I labor and delivery. That's right. Postpartum, newborn nursery special care nursery. So I really, I really, really loved my favorite thing was doing the uh, women's health type of thing. But yeah, I did and did urgent. I did urgent women's health care. So as an RN. And so yeah, those are the those are the paths that I took. I always would start one and then I'd be like, I don't want to work here anymore. So I'd start (laughs) somewhere else. But the the part that the this the area that I loved the most was the women's health the labor and delivery postpartum and things like that. that. I could totally see you as an LND nurse, like seriously. Yeah. And yeah. you know, isn't that the beautiful thing at being a nurse? There are so many things that we can do. The only reason, Absolutely. the only thing, the only reason why we would ever be stuck or quote unquote stuck is if we just chose not to try something different because yeah. it's literally unlimited in yeah. the hospital and even outside the hospital. you got school nursing, you got all kinds of, you know, types of nurse you could be. So let's take, let's go to nurse practitioners, so even a nurse practitioner, 17 years and primary care. Mm-hmm. And what, what, what is it? Cause I know you still practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got to foot them on both sides. So I'm interested to know what was it with traditional healthcare that even made you think, you know what, there's got to be something different, or let me look into holistic health or functional medicine. So take take us on that journey for a second. So in primary care, I see patients in, in a clinic. And the thing that is really interesting about what I do is I work in a office with physicians. So the physicians are actually the primary care provider. As the nurse practitioner, we see all of their overflow patients. And primary care is basically, you know, when you come in for your preventive health care or you come in for same day sick visits, basically. Mm -hmm. And 
also because it's family, you're seeing everyone from newborns, like two days old, all the way to geriatrics, you know, 80, 90 years old. So you're mm. seeing everything, but none of these patients are really your patients. You're Got seeing it. the doctor's patient for them. And so what made me really want to transition to having that more holistic approach was being able to have patients that were actually my own. So that's sort of like where I started looking into doing something differently than primary care, where I was just getting people in and out, giving them a Band-Aid fix, and then not really even feeling like I had any ownership on what was being done to them because they could still go back and say to their doctor, well, I didn't like how Glennis did that. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't feel like any ownership in that. So I really like the times when I did get a chance to spend some extra time with a patient who had extra questions. And I really got to del delve into deeper things with them and really help them do problem solving and understanding what was going on. And when I started um, researching and studying and going to uh, different seminars of functional medicine, I learned that there was just so much more out there and how we could really help people be well and not just help them when they get sick. Yeah. So that's, that was the difference. And then having that ownership of it myself was really another thing that was really important to me. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is ownership one, just wanting to have, wanting to have, be responsible for your own patients, yeah. right. And having the autonomy, mm -hmm. um, the ownership and the autonomy to do so. But then also what I heard you say is not just doing the whole band aid put a bandaid on it, send them on their way until they need another bandaid, basically. Yeah. 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 You wanted to do something that was really more, I would say, meaningful and fulfilling. Yeah. More, he absolutely. more healing. <laughs> more healing. Yeah, yeah. Because then, you know, teaching them how their body really works. Yeah. And so that they can like, like have a transformation in their health so that they're not just always trying to like, you know, how they say, chase a fire and put a fire out, but more right. figure out what's going on. And then of course they make the decision as to what they want to do with it, but it's not just always putting that bandaid on, putting that bandaid on and still going back, but it's right. a transformation in how they think, how they, um, you know, choose their, their foods, choose what things they, they put in their body. And um, that's, that was the difference for me. Yeah, I love that. So transformation over just a band aid, mm -hmm. <laughs> a quick fix. Transformation over a quick fix. Yes, something like that. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's so important, so important. And share with us. Because I know you just recently had a, a couple of great wins, but before we get to your wins, which I'm so excited and so proud of you for, what many everyone that's listening, I'm sure they're they're somewhat familiar with the Prosperous Practitioner Program, which of course is the program that me and Dr. Orlando's co facilitate where it's partially clinical from a root cause lens and the other piece is business because oftentimes even with, even with the knowledge and the skills what i found is that there's typically a gap we don't know how to like how do i monetize this how do i translate this into a business what's the first second third fourth fifth step like how do i actually make this a thing a thing for real mm -hmm. and so that's you know that pretty much speaks to what the prosperous practitioner program is about but what was it about the program that made you say, you know what, I want to join this. This is definitely something I want to enroll in. Well, first of all, I have to say there's a lot of different nurse coaching, business coaching, nurse entrepreneur things out there. So I feel so very blessed that I found Sharice. Sharice Williams coaching, it's so good for me. It's, it's been amazing. And I have had others that I have interviewed with just to kind of feel them out and see what they would be like. Um, but with Sharice, it's more personable and you get a, um, I feel like you get a more personal touch. Then putting that together with the Prosperous Practitioner Program, Dr. Orlandis Wells is amazing. And him and Sharice yeah. working together, they really, um, they really like feed off of each other. And then they really take the time out to teach us 
and to listen to our questions. So I love how the first day we have the, like, I'll say the lecture, right? I'll mm -hmm. call it like mm -hmm. the lecture part. We have that the first day. And then the second day we can come back and we can ask any questions. It's a Q and A and we go through case studies and I like how we do our case studies because we have time to go through each one and actually ask questions on it. I'm, I'm in another program where I can listen to the Q and A, but I don't, I don't have the option of stopping yes. and starting oh, and yes. you know like having questions, you know, having those questions ans answered mm -hmm. in real time at, at the time. So mm -hmm. this has been a lot. This has been really wonderful for me. And it's a smaller class. I like smaller classroom sizes, too. Yes. That was the other thing. Even when I was in um, my undergrad as a nurse, I went to a large university, didn't do as well there when I went to a smaller university. And it was just maybe, say, like 20 um, or less in the class. I soared. So I know that's something that really yeah. is beneficial for me is being in a smaller class size where I can have that one on one with the instructors and really have that that support. So that's yeah. what it's provided for me. It's given me um, so much more confidence when we look when we talked about the root cause blood analysis, like literally I've been doing you know, interpretation of labs as a nurse practitioner for all these years, but never really got it taught to me like how Do Dr. Orlandis breaks it down. It's been amazing. And like my confidence has shot up, like I would say a hundred percent. Then whenever um, we get into the business side with Sharice, she gives it to you like so that you feel more confident because she gives you, not only does she give you what to do, but she gives you examples of how to put it out there, how to get your niche, how to get your leads. And so um, it's, yeah, that's why I really have enjoyed the Prosperous Practitioner Program. I would definitely recommend it to anyone who wants to not only increase our knowledge um, surrounding um, the secret language of blood work that you guys mm -hmm. do and if you want to be a nurse entrepreneur, it's great. And you don't just get Dr. Orlandis in the first and then Sharice in the second half. You get them both. So you get a chance to interact on both with both at the same time. So it's yeah. great. <laughs> it's awesome. been very beneficial to me. And yes, I've had several wins since I started that I wasn't you, getting at all before. You have. And so proud of it. I'm going to share, have you share those in just a second, just to kind of catch some people up if they're if this is maybe their very, very first episode that they're listening to. So the Process Practitioner Program is a 12 week, I was going to say, I was gonna say 12 months. No, no, no. It's a 12 week program. The first six weeks is led by Dr. Orlandis. And it's all... Uh, around lab interpretation from a root cause lens. So Glenn has mentioned that, you know, she said she's been doing lab interpretations. She's been a nurse practitioner. And even I could even say, you know, when I, you know, my background is ICU. And so even as an ICU nurse, you know, we, we were running labs all the time. And, and it was either, if it was flagged up, great, if, you know, not great, but if it was flagged up, we needed to do something about it. If it was flagged down, you know, if it was high or low, we knew what to do otherwise. Uh, and it was always with the, far, you know, was the, the solution was always some type of medication, right? Yeah. Um, but with the, in the process practitioner program, it's so important just to make this distinction. It's, it's, when I say we're looking at things from a root cause and we're learning from a root cause uh, lens, it's because we're looking at the optimal range, not the standard range. The standard range is when you're already, that's like your standard lab ranges, right? So like a potassium 3.5 to 5.0, right? I feel like that's ingrained in my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like those standard ranges, but here's what happens. There, there is an optimal range, right? Which is a more narrow range than a standard range that when you, if, if you catch people within that, within that optimal range where they're in dysfunction, but not quite get to dis-ease, like why do we wait till they're in dis-ease? Disease, right? We, it, we, we can catch things, we can intervene quicker when we are looking at uh, lab work from an optimal range. Uh, perspective, right? And so that's what Glennis was saying that, you know, she she's 
uh, been looking at labs for the last 17 years from mm-hmm. the way we learned it in nursing school, the nurse right. practitioner school, right? Even doctors, I've had this conversation with Dr. Landis many times and he's like, well, yeah, this is not how, you know, we didn't learn this in, 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 in medical school like this, right? And so that's what's so powerful about the process practitioner program and really learning how to look at labs from an optimal range lens or with an optimal range lens because you can help you can help people faster. You can help people, you can intervene quicker on their behalf and you don't have to wait till they suffer. And now they have a full blown, you know, autoimmune disease. We, you can actually see in their lab work, looking at their CBC with diff, you know, where they are trending towards maybe an autoimmune diagnosis, even though they haven't been diagnosed yet, because by the time people get, and I'm just using autoimmune, an autoimmune disease as an example, but it's really anything. But by the time they get to a full blown autoimmune diagnosis, how much, how long have they suffered? Yeah. Right. How long have they gone without answers? I know I'm not feeling great. I know that I'm having, you know, I know that I'm tired. I know that I'm feeling this and that. Of course the provider checks the labs and they're like, Oh, didn't flag as high or low. You're fine. Meanwhile, the patient's like, no, I know that I'm not fine. Something's not right. And so I love that we're able to help, you know, before help really get your help. Our our clients get uh, answers Mm -hmm. that they're not otherwise getting. And so I love that. And so, um, so yeah, so that's just a little bit, again, just to catch everybody up. I think I mentioned it's co-facilitated, co-facilitated by Dr. Alanis, who's been in the functional medicine space for probably eight eight years, and nine years, he was OB, OBGYN for like 20 plus years, but functional medicine specifically for the last eight years or so. And um, so it's, it's, it's powerful. That being said, share with us your wins. And this, so it's really cool that she just got another little win right before we hopped onto this podcast, which is really exciting. But take us back to the first one first. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> once, we, once we were in the Prosperous Practitioner Program and we were learning about the optimal ranges we were like offering our clients a functional medicine. Oh, now I'm forgetting the name. Root cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Root cause lab analysis. And whenever I would offer that, I, I, the patients would say yes. So, so far I've had four root cause lab analysis patients. That is so oh my gosh. It's so exciting. One of which has converted to a, three month for 3k client. So that's exciting. Yeah. Super excited. So I'm going to stop you there just for a sec before you share the last one. (laughs) Just so I can unpack it. So one of the things that we make sure, like we are so serious about helping you get a quick win. It's not one of those programs where it's like, oh, hopefully you'll make some money down the line or use this knowledge later down the line. No, 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 no. We're like, okay, let's get your first client. Let's help you get your first client. And so pretty much everyone who's come through the, uh, I would say 95, 97, probably percent of everyone who's come through the process practitioner program has enrolled at least one client, at least one, um, uh, while they are in the program. Like I said, the program is only, it's, it's three months long, so 12 weeks long. Uh, our, one of our clients, one of the students from the Process Practitioner Program actually enrolled her first client, like right before our first session, which is really exciting. And so Glennis offered it to several people that were already, now Glennis, tell us, were these people already, were you already connected to them in some way, shape or form? Like, did you know them in some capacity um... or were they new? I knew them in some capacity, okay. uh, except for one. Okay. Um, only one I did not know at all. And she was a referral to me from my physical therapist. She was also her physical therapist. Oh, we love referrals. We love yes, referrals. Yes. So, so lovely. She, the others um, I knew in some capacity yeah. before. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I'm glad. So the reason why I ask that is so, so often I hear nurses who are you know transitioning into a holistic health and but their concern is i I don't know anybody where am i going to find clients Mm -hmm. and i always tell them your clients you already have you probably have at least three or four five clients if not more that are already in your experience they are connected to you already in some way shape or form okay Mm -hmm. you may not you you may not know who they are yet but it's all but one of the reasons why you don't you haven't identified them as a potential client is that typically what I found is that you're not quite clear on who it is that you can serve yeah. like, and, and how you can serve them, serve them. And so that's just like, if, if I'm sitting here and I say, I don't, I don't mention that I like, like I, I haven't made the, it's not in my awareness that I like brown, um, 
what are these thermos or whatever I've, by the way for if you're listening to this i'm actually holding up a brown thermos what are this? is this called a thermos what is this called I think a thermos. A thermos. A okay. I used to okay. just a water bottle, but a water bottle. But it's, okay, it's it's a water bottle. bottle. But it's, yeah, but it keeps your water hot or whatever. Whatever you have in there, it keeps your beverage yeah. hot. Bottom line is, if I have not made it clear that I love brown water bottles, this could be sitting here on my desk every day, all day, and I won't see it. I'll. I mean, it'll just fade into the background. That doesn't mean that it was never there. It's always been here. I wasn't clear. Mm -hmm. I wasn't clear that I was looking for brown water bottles. I wasn't clear. And so that's what I find is that when we you talked about niche, and that's one of the first business lessons inside the Prosperous Practitioner Program, we help you identify your niche, which is your specialty. And once you get clear on your specialty, you would be amazed at how many people that are already associated with you in some way, shape or form just magically appears. And it's not that they weren't there. It was that you weren't clear on who you were looking for. They were not clear on what it is that you did and how it is that you could help and who it is that you could help. So they never associated you as the solution to their problem. And you never associated them as even having a problem because you weren't even clear on what the problem was. So that's, so that's the importance of a niche. So, all right. So you got clear in your niche. You started offering these root cause blood work analysis Mm -hmm. You enrolled, like literally, we, you just completed the uh, the um, process practitioner program last week. And so within these three months that you've been inside the program, you've enrolled four clients. Yes. Well, that paid for the program. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that paid for the program. That's another thing. Sometimes, you know, when we're looking at investing in certain things, it's like, well, how long, you know, am I going to get, what's the return on investment? And, and again, you literally just complete the program last week and you've already signed four clients. And not only have you sold, for, signed for, enrolled four clients into your root cause, root cause blood work analysis, but one of them has decided to work with you longer term. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And yes. so she's working with you for three months mm -hmm. um, to help resolve the issues that you guys found that were identified mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. the root cause, root cause blood work analysis. And so that's a three month program that you're working with her on or with. And that's a 3K program. Is that what it was? You charged 3K for that program? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, so let's talk about that just for a hot second, because mm -hmm. I know that you and I have had this conversation before just around around money. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. Actually, it's 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 probably one of the most uh pervasive uh let's say issues perhaps. Mm -hmm. I don't know if issues is the best word, but it's one of the most pervasive things that I find when I'm working with clinicians transitioning to entrepreneurship and it's around like this this money shame. The shame mm -hmm. around who am I to charge for my services? Who mm -hmm. am I to ask? for X amount, no matter what the amount is, I don't care if it's a dollar, who yeah. am I to ask for that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so can you share with us how you navigated that? Oh, like how did you, yeah. Being able to charge, is that mm -hmm. you mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not, yeah, being able to charge and receive, because it is a whole receivership. Yeah. Thing. Being yeah. able to ask for and then receive, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I, I did was I asked Cherise for help with that because I was, <laughs> I, I literally was, she asked me one time, she's like, well, how are you, like, what was your mindset on money? How was it that, how were you raised with money? You know, what was the thought process with money? And I told her that my mom used to always say, well, you can't get blood out of a turnip. So in other words, if people don't have money, you just can't get money it get any money from them. So stop asking for it. So I always had that mindset like, okay, well, I won't ask for any money because people probably don't have it. And so there's no need to ask for it. Mm -hmm. So I asked her for help with that. And um, I went through her program called Transcendence. And that's really completely changed my thought process on how to look for things and not having that money shame. Because if I'm providing a service, then it's fine for me to ask for the amount of income or the amount of price that I want to be paid yeah. for that. So yeah, that that has been something that I have that had to work on my mind to really get me to feel more comfortable with it. Because I remember even about a year and a half ago when I was first starting out getting clients, I was I was like you know, doing the enrollment calls. And I just, 
I think when I asked, try to do the clothes, I wasn't feeling confident in asking for it. Mm -hmm. um, that one reason was because also because of what, how I grew up learning about money and mm -hmm. also because in my early years as a nurse practitioner, I worked in underserved communities. Yeah. So all those, of that plays a part. Yeah, all of those that played a part. So those those patients were on, you know, state funded insurance and they didn't have money or they could only have to pay like by a sliding scale. So mm -hmm. that was the only thing that was in my experience. Right. That was your paradigm. That yes. was right. Yes. No one has money and, and yes. they can't pay for what it is that they want as it relates to their health and, yeah. and all of that. So so really what you're speaking of is really your relationship with money. We all have a relationship with money whether it's, I don't want to say good or bad, because I don't want to say that, but whether it's healthy or unhealthy. Yeah. A lot of us have a lot of unhealthy relationship, a, a, a unhealthy relationship with money and even our wealth identity mm -hmm. because of how we're raised, mm -hmm. right? Because of things that are not just because how we were raised and there's no shame, no shame on our parents, whatever they, of course they raise us the best that they can raise us. And yeah. what they taught us was passed down from their parents. Right. <laughs> and probably depending on how, you know, many generations go back, we all have great, probably grandparents or great grandparents who are part of the great depression. Mm -hmm. There was no money. And so yeah. that, but that gets passed down the way of thinking, the way of don't, you know, don't, all of that gets passed down generationally. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and now, and then we wonder why we have a hard time or why, oh why we gosh. have yeah. uh, the relationship with the money that we do and why we have a, um, maybe not even a healthy wealth identity. And maybe we never even put the word wealth identity in the same sentence as ourselves, mm. you know? And so yeah. Yeah. that's a whole other discussion for a whole other time. We'll have to, we'll have to make that a topic. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Transcendence, it's a different program, a separate from the process practitioner program. It's it literally, is a mindset and self-identity evolution program mm -hmm. because we will never outperform what it is that we believe about ourselves. We're not going to outwork. We're not going to outthink. We're not going to outdo what it is that we believe about ourselves. So if we're wanting to create something more, if we're wanting to create something different, we've got to shift our identity. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. That's why you find you may have found that you, you know, you take one step forward and two steps back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have these ideas that you I want to do this, this and this and this. But there's something like, no, it's like pulling you back. No, yeah. it's that old identity. Mm. It's that old identity. So now we have to shift. But here's the thing. You have both identities because you wouldn't even have that desire if it wasn't if, if you didn't have the ability to if you did not have the ability to fulfill that desire, it wouldn't be there in the first place. Wow. So the beauty is you've got both. It's just that the one that it's the, um, the identity that we have given the most voice to that we've been with the most 20, 30, 40, 50 years, it's that it's the other identity. So now it's just a matter of, okay, how do we switch? How do I actually step in to the identity that really is pulling me forward? That's really having all these great ideas. That's really wanting to create something more. That's really wanting to make a bigger impact. That's really wanting to change the financial you know, situation. That's really wanting to change their relationship with money. That's all the things. How do I step into that identity? It's there. You just have to, you just have to know how to shift. And so that's what transcendence is all about. But yeah, and, and, and some of transcendence is interweaved into the process practitioner program, but it is definitely a separate program in and of itself. But okay, so tell us, <laughs> tell us about your win that just came in just a second ago, right before we hopped on. Oh my goodness. Yes. So <laughs> I just signed a client yesterday for mm -hmm. the root cause lab analysis. And during our conversation, when I'm asking her the questions of what she really wanted, before I could even get to that, she had already told me, you know what, I think maybe you could help my daughter. I really don't know, blah, 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 blah. So she was telling me all about her daughter. And then I, I kind of got her back to her. <laughs> yeah. yeah we're, we're good at helping other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we always put ourselves last, right? Yes. So, I got so her back for to her. You for helping her refocus yeah. on her and getting her <laughs> together. Yeah. And so she signed. And then just before we got on this call, she sent me a text saying she had talked to her daughter, told her all about me and that her, her daughter is interested and wants to talk to me. So She's exchanging our phone numbers and I'm going to set up an appointment to talk to her. So, I'm so excited. So exciting. And so let me tell you, we love <laughs> referrals. We love, love, love us some referrals. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So that'll be your fifth client 
your fifth root cause blood work analysis client, right? Yeah, yeah. That is so freaking excited. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you and where your <laughs> business is going. Tell me or share with us as we're coming to an end here, share with us, like, what's your vision? What's the vision for your business? Oh, wow. Um, my vision is, first of all, just to be able to really expand. When I, when I first started, you know, even thought about what I wanted to do. Of course, I wanted to be a nurse entrepreneur and be able to serve the clients who need me the most. And the ones who need me the most are the ones that are in my niche, first of all, which is oh, women. Yeah, I was going to say share. Yeah. share <laughs> which is women, perimenopause to mini menopause, who are experiencing, you know, that belly fat, that fatigue, that brain fog. Um, and they're just struggling with that. Um, so that's that. Those are the people who need me the most. Those are the clients who need me the most. So I want to be able to have that uh, available space and time for them. So like right now, I'm just doing it very part time because I still work at the traditional primary care office four days a week, four days a week. So almost um, not quite 40 hours, but I say 36, maybe <laughs> 36 not count, week. not counting the work that you take home. Right. Not counting. Let's the work be clear. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 So with the work I take home, it's probably more like 50 hours a week, mm. honestly. But so I work, I do my, uh, my functional medicine business very part-time, but my vision is to be able to do that full-time yeah. and to be able to serve the clients who need me the most is really a really big passion of mine to be able to, even move forward into um, even one day having my own podcast and yeah. being able to broadcast out, you know, to more women so that they can hear. I haven't established a website yet, so I'd love to, you know, have a website and also um, maybe create even like a private group Facebook page so that people could I could bring people in. They could ask different questions and I can do master classes on there. Right now I am doing webinars mm -hmm. at least twice a month as events on Facebook, but I'd like to be able to offer a weekly masterclass as well. So nice. that's just some, some of the, the vision that I have for it. I, I would say that. within the next year or two. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And something tells me it'll be quicker than two years for sure. Yes. <laughs> um, but I want to just highlight one thing that you said. You said, I don't even have a website yet. And, and, and the reason I want to highlight that is because so many people think they have to have all these other things in place mm -hmm. oh, and you don't yeah. and you don't. Okay. Yeah. We've already, Glenn has already enrolled four clients into one particular offering and which led to one of those clients enrolling in a higher ticket, longer uh, length program with her, no website. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, sometimes we get stuck on all these little things that actually don't, don't matter because guess what? A website is a website is not going to, it actually just puts a barrier between you and your client. All you need is a client. You need to have conversations about what's going on with your clients and then enroll them in your program. And I know that sounds maybe oversimplistic and yes, it is nuanced and yes, there's some skill involved and all of that we do teach inside the process practitioner program. But again, just highlighting, you don't need a website. So if you've been spending your time, like once I get my website together, I'll be ready to go. Stop it. Walk away from the website. That is the least of your concern right now. Like seriously, seriously. So I love that you shared that. I love that you shared that. And it really start for you, your mechanism in terms of, of, of client acquisition is we worked on creating a webinar for you or a masterclass for you. We, yes. we, we ran that. or So that, that is your event that you run, your conversion event. Mm -hmm. You enroll people into the conversion event from Facebook and then you mm -hmm. hold the event or the masterclass. And from there, they book a call with you mm -hmm. and then you, they either enroll or they don't enroll, but you have a conversation. So it's, it's okay. that simple. You guys, it's that simple. Yes. It's nuanced. Yes. There's little pieces to that, but that's the whole process. That's the process. Mm -hmm. And very low tech. Yeah, very low <laughs> I tech. use a phone call and a Zoom. A Zoom. So yeah. yeah. Any last yeah. words? So for anyone that's, they are listening, they're like, oh my gosh. Actually, wait, hold on. Before I go there, I, I do want to ask you this. Going <laughs> back to your vision. Going back to your vision really quick. Okay. You mentioned, you know, being able to, you mentioned the people that want, that need you the most. And, yeah. and. And it's not just the people that you, that, that need you the most. It's people that you absolutely enjoy working with. Yeah. Yeah. You know? 
because a lot of we all have been trained like you were talking about functional medicine i mean um, excuse me family practice you might see everything from a two-day-old to a 90 year old yes, yes right we've all been trained even in nursing just mm-hmm. even if you're not a nurse practitioner we've all been trained to take care of all of yes. the above mm-hmm. but that your niche is a niche that you actually you, you enjoy helping women who are perimenopausal and menopausal yeah and they need support. And so yes. it's a win-win because it's something that you absolutely love doing anyway. So I love that. So the question I was going to ask you when I cut myself off is, um, I would love to know. So we heard about your vision, kind of podcast, making more of an impact, having a Facebook group with all these women that they can ask questions and all that. Um, again, bigger impact. What's your, what's your financial vision? Where would you like your business to be like in a year? Wow. In a two year or two, oh. whatever you pick the number, <laughs> whatever yeah. the vision is. I, I'm going to say two, six, two, two, six figure, 200,000. I don't know how to 200, say 000. it. Yeah. 200,000. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it simple. two, six figure incomes, but yeah, 200,000, <laughs> um, just generating 200,000 a year in income in, the in your year. own business. Yeah. In my own else. business. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. In a year. Oh yeah. Totally doable. Absolutely a doable. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's exciting. And I stand with you in that. And I'm here to support you every single step of the way uh, for you achieving that. And then beyond, if that's what you desire. So yeah. Yeah. And beyond. So beautiful. (laughs) Yes. Any final words you want to share with uh, someone that maybe is listening? They are, they know they want to make a bigger impact. They know they're, they know that the traditional healthcare model is just not really aligned anymore with their values. Like they just, they're tired of the band aid, the quick fix band aid, because it's not really helping. Any words to that nurse or nurse practitioner who's listening, who's considering transitioning into holistic health? Well, well, I would just say listen to your inner voice, what it's telling you that it's because you know. I I work with nurse practitioners who know that they want to stay where they are. And they've even said, I don't want to have my own business. I, that's just not me. So, but if you're hearing that, if you're feeling that in your inner soul, then follow it. And now you have, you actually have a a path that you can actually follow, reach out to Sharice and Dr. Orlandis in the Prosperous Practitioner Program, because just knowing it and not acting on it keeps you right in the same place that you were. When I first met Cherise, I told her I had been wanting to be an entrepreneur for almost 20 years, but I didn't know how. And I really didn't have, I didn't have the wherewithal to, or I didn't know actually where to look for the help. And mm-hmm. though I was kept looking in different places, trying to find that it wasn't, it wasn't visible to me. So yeah. when I did find Cherise and was able to connect with her and start, that's when everything really has started to come together. So if you are thinking about it, I would say stop thinking about it and just <laughs> uh, go ahead and act on it. And yeah. um, you'll know whether it's for you or whether it's not for you when you when you get started. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Follow your inner voice. Follow that inner yeah. Because you know if you want to have something all your own, you know, you want you know if you want to have your own business or not. And here's the thing too. You might think, I think I do want to have my own business. And mm-hmm. then later you choose or whatever. I mean, here's yeah. the deal. We're only here, we get one go around at this thing called life. That's right. <laughs> and so let's go for it. Let's do all that we can do in this life. Mm-hmm. Let's make the level of impact that we want to make. And let's go for what our heart is pulling us towards. So Thank you, Glenn, for your time. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for all that you've uh, contributed to everyone uh, today. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So join us for our next episode when we dive deeper into what exactly is a root cause blood work analysis and how do we master that? See you next time, you guys. As always, I love you. I appreciate you. If this resonated with you, you guys, send me a DM. Send me a message. Let me know what resonated with you. We'll drop Glennis's info in the in the show notes as well. So if you want to connect with her, if you're perimenopausal and you need support, or if you just have questions, we'll drop uh, Glennis's info in the show notes as well. Until next time, see you later. Bye.